get the limited edition signed poster by donating $100. Your donations will support the hardworking team who made the UBC a reality. Thank you so much. How good is your backgammon? Prove yourself by downloading the new Backgammon Galaxy app for free. Play against players from all over the world, get a Galaxy rating, and see how you rank among the stars. See you in the Backgammon Galaxy app. Subscribe to the Galaxy newsletter and get tournament info, product news, special discounts, community updates, free content, and much more. Book your room for the Backgammon World Championship and Monte Carlo Open. Limited rooms available and only 500 room nights, so hurry up and book now. Join the UBC 2023 Contender Tournament and the Estafter Tournament. Nick Blazier here. Buy my book. It's available on Amazon now. An intuitive approach to match study. To skip the numbers and the calculations and develop your score feel. Coming soon. Backgammon Masterclass by Super Grandmaster Masayuki Mochisuki and Grandmaster Mark Olson. Subscribe to the Galaxy Newsletter to get information about the book launch. Visit the Galaxy Shop for luxury backgammon boards and accessories. Designed by players, for players. New board, primal, limited edition, only 10 boards made. Order now. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up, backgammon fans? The UBC final, Mochi versus Sander. We're heading into match five. The score is seven to one for Sander. He's won four out of four matches and three out of four PR points. The average PR is 2.2 for Sander, 2.9 for Mochi. So we made it one third of the way, Nick. What do you think so far? I think it's, it's chances are getting grim for Mochi. I mean, there's a lot of backgammon to be played, but I, I ran it through the, the coin flip calculator again. Sander already at uh, almost a 90% chance to win outright. I think Mochi is under 4% to win outright. And maybe his best shot is like a little under 7% of the time there, or around six, we'll say. Uh, they, they tie and the PR will decide it, right? Um, but with Sander with a sizable lead in that too, that could be difficult to recoup for him too. So over 90% favorite for Sander for sure, which is uh, a steep climb. And he is not leaking anything that I've seen yet either. It doesn't really look like he's going to leave a lot of room for Mochi to get back in it. Um, so Mochi's going to have to come in with his A game and more than he's showing up with on day one, right? Yeah. And going to need, I don't know, something from Sander. Maybe he's got to bring a pack of beer for him or something like that. I don't really know. <laughs> but, but he's going to need some some sort of miracle here, I think, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But we've seen Mochi do it before. It kind of looks like the same uh, first four matches from UBC Final 2019 where Sander was leading, I don't remember the lead exactly, but it wasn't as demanding as it is now. But Sander yeah. was leading, playing better, and then Mo Mochi came back on day two and destroyed him. Right, so, right. Yeah. Let's see if, if that's going to happen again. I don't think it will because I think Sander will be better prepared this year. I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to allow that to happen again because he was sloppy last time. Yeah. I think he seems more disciplined uh, this time around. Yeah, I don't think he's adjusting to the format as all has been like our story. But I think he will learn from that mistake. I think he knows that he didn't take it as seriously. Like, he just felt comfortable with his lead, he said, mm -hmm. in that first year. And didn't come back and play his best. And I think he knows that if he leaves Mochi an inch, that Mochi will take a mile, right? And yeah. so that's how he gets back into this. Uh, Sander has to play the same as he did day one and come back and close this out. Because who knows what the dice will do. There's yeah. always a chance, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah we shouldn't yeah. count Mochi out yet. That's right, definitely for sure. Okay, yeah. good. Let's head into match number five. Here we go. All right. So here we have the PRs. Sander at an average PR of 2.2. Mochi 2.9. And the score is 7 to 1 for Sander. Showing up for the first match of the day today with that film crew that we got to meet in Monte Carlo. Sander looking relaxed. Yeah. Mochi as well. And a 5 4 to open, he's going to think about or just adjust his sleeve real quick? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 6 4 after the split. Did we just point after this? This can be hard to remember, right? Yes, I think that's, yeah. the, that's the play. Opening Running theory. doesn't make a lot of sense when you're losing the race slightly. Yeah. 6-5 can run, though, after our opponent makes a better board, and so a small advantage for Sander to begin. And 
And now I think Mochi wants to seek contact somehow. So splitting looks very reasonable, but interesting this the 16 the 24 to 14 play also covers the outfield if Mochi yeah. or if Sander tries to run. That's right. So that reasons extra, for both plays. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a clear play either way. Yeah. The 14 point a check around the 14 point gives that yeah. outfield coverage. Mm -hmm. Which is nice to have. Good roll by Sander. Yeah, he had the option of escaping and hitting as well, but I think cleaning up the blot, sending another checker back, all looks thematically better to make the bar point there. Um, now I don't think Mochi wants to be split anymore against 11 in the zone and way down in the race. So I think he's going to start by probably making the 24 and find some deuce to play. Yes. 13 to he, 11 looks good for containment and building. So, he he yeah. could also make the 23 point anger, which he is could. slightly better than the 24 point. But there isn't a big difference between the two rear angers here. So I think yeah. when you play make the 24, you get that free deuce to play from 13 to 11. That makes that play a much better play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is this a 6-3? So I think you yeah. should try to run. And Moji's gained a double shot by playing down 13 to 11. Yes, Sander is up in the race here. He's gonna. He has a free roll basically to achieve full freedom. Right. He didn't He's succeed. Succeeded. And I think the deuce is still coming down, isn't it? Don't we? Do we want to? Here we can split. Now? Yeah, yeah, because you can split with tempo. So now mm. is a good time to split actually, while Sander's on the bar. Okay. Still wasn't sure if he was under any pressure to there. I think Sander's going to attack here with another tempo hit. This is difficult to avoid it because Mochi's so well poised to make a very good point. Likely, if not on head, then the five point or something like this. Yes. Um, it's tricky, though. I guess if we're going to go for the attack, then maybe we should enter high. Um, but yeah, it's but scary then to enter on that 20. You, yeah. you want to unstack the six point. That's why you have yeah. a stack. Mm hmm and we see it's quite reasonable to just enter deep and play down and try to play for no contact as well. It, it um, is. It is. Yeah. At least you don't risk your own race lead here. That's what makes this position difficult. It's the, the fact that Sander has, is, is ahead in pips. So Sander doesn't really want to get hit. But I, yeah. it's just it seems that the gain in tempo is just so big. Mm -hmm. And you get to unstack, which is efficient use of checkers. So it right. seems that the best play is to come in on the 20 and unstack and hit loose on the three point. Yeah, 13 to 8 is actually deteriorating our position a little bit here, too. We create another stack of five, right? Okay, yes. so he finds a way to stay, step out of harm's way and still find a tempo hit. Just yes. a little bit better to be high if we're going to, yes. you know, we could have picked different, better distribution things. Yes, like exactly. Better distribution. Do we just anchor up here now? I don't see a better deuce. Yeah. Now, the, the 22 point is nice for Mochi. Yeah. Oh, and Ooh, which one does he want to hit? He's ahead in the race, so I presume he wants to try to achieve freedom and less returns. So I'd go from the front. Yes, that's the right idea, exactly. Okay. Minimize return shots. Yeah. And you do that by playing 21 to 15. They're you do close. sacrifice a little bit of connection between your back checkers, but it's worth the price because it's you, do, you really want to minimize return shots here. Sure, sure. 5-2 can make a better anchor. Is there something better available on the board? I don't see any. Yeah. Any better I mean, place. It doesn't even reduce contact either. We're still back on the 22. We just make sure our opponent doesn't start to prime us or anything yeah. like that too. It's really nice to make the 20 point and yeah. put all those checkers in Sanders front position to, to not so good use. Sure. This can send another checker back and play around the bend. Just kind of naturally working towards oh. home. Oh, but he wants uh, to think about making the nine point. The no, he shouldn't make the priming point here because you, when your opponent has an advanced anchor, it's never going to be really effective to make a prime. Right. So the value of that is the interaction with the blot on the 22, but we can just do better and try to play a simple racing game and try yeah. to come around. You know? Just come so around. Not, come around not, with a hit. Yeah, yeah, we're not so far ahead in the race yet. That's either, right. So it's yeah. nice to send more checkers back. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. We're not that far ahead that we just want to cruise here and not hit. Yeah. Ah, this is this is not the right idea, Sander. I mean, it's not an ugly play, but you you have a hit available on your opponent's side of the board. It's not like the alternative here to hitting is to make a super powerful priming move because that's mm -hmm. not possible against a, a an anger on the twenty point. Yeah. You just allow your opponent to improve too. There's going to be rolls that make the bar yes. point, the five point attack, whatever Mochi can do. And we're not taking away that half a roll where almost none of that exists after. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, hey, Sander, that was a blunder. Uh, bad start from Sander here. <laughs> He's not yeah. off to the best, best start. 
Okay, so I mentioned attacking here, but I'm not sure we can here. I guess we could make the nine mm. and hit loose. That feels a little weird. But with the deuce made, maybe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I because like what else do we have? I mean, if we make the yeah. nine, that's the best four. I mean, do you want to play six to one? Do you want yeah, to play this play? So. Yeah, this is bad. We're not trying to prime, right? So, I mean, I guess maybe a play B would be to just make the four point and make, make the more four point. point. Yeah. But, we uh, just leave so much initiative to Sander to escape here. Ah, yeah. that's also an ugly play. Blunder. This feels more understandable. <sighs> that's a tough one to sort out. Mm, it's the. Yeah. It feels pretty weird to make the nine point and break it's some of this and loose and have a two point board instead, right? If we're leaving shots anyway, all these arguments. It's just when your opponent steps up to your three point, that's when you begin to be become aggressive against it. It's when he has one yeah. man back. Sure. So, this is a confusing play as well. We can increase our contact maximally by coming in on the 24, but this yeah. feels like forever. So it's very hard not to make the 21. Yeah, that was a hard play, I think. Uh, yeah. And I understand why Mochi made the wrong one. Uh, but it, it was better to, to go for maximum contact. Mm -hmm. You don't really have much timing for a back game here. You're only down yeah. 35 pips. It's not even the plan. I think he just comes out with two here. Um, oh, yeah, that's better yeah. to come out with two than just sling around. Yeah, well, I mean, your opponent doesn't want to hit from the midpoint, right? But he That's might right. It, be it's basically for free. Five. It's for yeah. free to go out there with two blots. There's no two, risk. Pads. Okay, okay Mochi. Mochi's position a little bit stronger here. Yeah. Yes. Got more flexibility. Ooh, the five point can be made. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think we should. Even like, when do we ever see three blots in the outfield like if, this? But yeah, it's but what, right it is what if here. Sander dances? Ah, okay, he doesn't yeah. dance because that would have been an interesting cube decision for Mochi. I don't know if this is any different. I think we still have a lot of cubes coming here. This looks pretty threatening. Like, what six is he going to play? He's going to bury behind or volunteer mm. a whole bunch of shots. Yeah, that's that's tricky for Sandra. Classic Bagamon dilemma here. Do you jump out into a triple shot or do you just bury a checker on the ace? And it seems like that the game plan is just to bury. Yeah. What yeah, can you do? The computer wants to bury. It's safer. Um. You win less games, actually, but yeah. more but more gammons, oddly enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, yeah, it's just too much to jump out to a triple shot here. You don't want to be in the bar. Sure. I, I think it's it's too thin for Mochi to double uh, next roll. The equity looks like that, but looking at the position, I would think that I probably have a cube. I have like a minor racing lead. I have a four-point board to a... Nope, like a one point board. There's a blot on the ace, 10 in the zone. Like everything, well, I feel if, like I'm threatening Gammons a lot of the time here. If we use the, the point system that I'm advocating, ooh, wrong choice by Sander. And this is going to bait the, a cube almost for sure, I think. In the Masterclass I think there's book. There's a lot of Narculos here, right? Yeah. In the Masterclass book, uh, I present a system that's quite similar to the Pratt model, uh, where you have to get two out of three points and you have to have threats in order to have a cube. Here, Moshi definitely has threats. But does he have two out of three points? He gets one point for blitz attack. That's for sure. But for, for priming, he doesn't get any points. That's zero points because Sander has a better priming formation. And for the race, well, Mochi is down three pips. That's also zero points. He doesn't have a race lead. So uh, mm. it, it seems that it's not quite strong enough yet. You know, he doesn't get up to two points here. Well, he's technically like one pip ahead in the race being on roll. Yeah, okay. There's but also, if, if we you want to think about in terms of threats, like he's effectively always going to hit and always actually going to have like a 10 pip lead in the race, right? So it's almost like the... Yes, it, that's it's right. It's a weird one to calculate. Yeah. It is. That, that's why it's a little bit weird to only have one point out of three here. Uh, it's probably yeah. more like one and a half point for those re reasons that you mentioned. I could so convince it, myself it was two pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then you would have to get a little bit, maybe a full point for the race. And even if you hit, it's you might be up a little bit more. But And it's not every time. You need to be up like in this position. You would be up maybe like 13, 14 pips in order to have one full point for the race mm. game plan. Okay. So it's, it just falls short. You're not quite there yet. But it, I mean... It's not a horrible cube. There are big threats here. Yeah. I don't he's, see Sander passing this cube. He's pausing to think about it, though, and it's not crystal clear for the take for me either. I um. He's going to count the pips. There's clearly a lot of gammons here, yeah. yeah he's yeah. going to count the okay. pips and realize this, there's no way I'm passing this. That's a good roll for Mochi. It's not only does it hit, it also gains a ton of pips. 
Mm -hmm. I think he gains like 25 pips on this roll. I don't think there's a reason to leave the 3 6 or any fly shots now, so we can come around with both and play 9 to 5. Yeah. Why not? Looks Why like not? it holds very nicely. I guess he's just checking all possibilities here, all combinations. Yeah. You could slot the 7, but it's too much because you would leave 3 6. 3, 4, and 1, 6. That's 6 out of 36 shots. It's, it's just too much. No! Builds better. Okay, okay. Small blunder from Mochi. I mean, it's a really yeah. shaky uh, game 1 here uh, in match 5. Both players are making blunders, and they, they've been playing so well in the last couple of matches. This, too, is miserable for, for Sander. He can stay out of direct range, but leave a pile of indirects, and he's getting... Pounced oh, on yeah. on the three point anyway. That he's gonna get those checkers are gonna get picked up a lot. There's at least a, some duplication to to playing thirteen to eleven and playing seven to five slots the five point with the wrong checker. So mm. I think mm -hmm. it should be fairly easy to find thirteen to eleven here. Yeah. Either way, it's quite uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, that's a huge blunder from well. Sander. They just. <laughs> what happened? What <laughs> happened to them overnight? This is a difficult game, though. I mean, a lot of these decisions are pretty confusing. I understand these mistakes for sure. Um, here we come in with the five. Okay, okay. So there's some priming value. Mochi can get stuck here. Yes, and that's true. Enter. That yeah. There is some priming value here. Ace is pretty huge. For wow, Mochi, that is that. huge. He can come out with the six as well. Now, even if he gets hit with the three, he's got such good mobility. Send me to roll up. three. Okay, Sander yeah. strikes back. That was crucial three. Look at the PRs, yeah. 11 versus 10. Yeah, that'll come down. Yeah, of hits. course it will, but yeah, still a bit ugly. Uh -huh. Enter with the ace, okay, still fighting for an anchor. 6-3 gets the cover, but it can't hit him off the ace, so a little bit of life. Uh, mobility more important with that four prime, apparently, okay. Yeah. That would have been tricked into coming closer to attacking, maybe. It's nice to get the mobility to jump out the prime. Mm -hmm. I These think he should hop just out too. That's do still the same. More important, huh? yeah, yeah, we can't get a new builder, so I guess so. Okay. Santa needs that ace. Yeah. And Mochi is going to attack. Yeah. It's, there's the attack. What about the ace? Yeah, there's some. We always have to think about two to one to bring covers closer, but I think I'm not sure that actually works. Oh, here. this one because now double three and double six covers. Yeah, 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 exactly. And we keep the more pure board. Yeah. Uh, six down to the bar seems great now, and then yes. sure, just from the fifteen. See he isn't. Yeah, he's not scared of double aces. They're duplicated actually. Yeah. Because you want to make the five point with the, the last two aces. Uh, yeah, it doesn't get to cover. cover. So I guess we can just clean up a little bit. There's not really any benefit, I don't think, to leaving your blood spread out out there. So how about 15, 13, 6, 5? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, you shouldn't really spend too much time bank on this move. It, it's impossible mm. that there is a big equity difference. Good point. He's going to go for maximum mobility, it looks like, and more covers, okay? Yeah. I'm not sure what he gains on there, actually, though, like what cover he Yeah, 5, 4, 6, 3 already covers. Yep. Okay, five there covers. we go. There's the closeout. Don't we just, uh, interesting, I'm not sure why 7 days. 15 to 14 seems like it, just getting closer to home seems very strong. Yeah. Let's make sure we don't accidentally crack against the midpoint somehow. Well, he loves to put the checker on the 5 point there, I think, too. Looks like very nice bear in distribution. Six is no problem. Yeah. This yeah, that's the only. is a little awkward on fives. But the only thing you have to check for here is that you don't get an awkward position after rolling double sixes or even double yeah. fives. Not sure why he played in too deep like that. So this one, I think we do have to play uh, mm -hmm. eight to two and then just ten to eight along with it. Mm -hmm. If we play in with both, then we have the odd stacking can leave yeah. a shot right away. Both. Is just more important. Both options are slightly ugly mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. prefer to play beautiful in backgammon yeah make beautiful plays but here <laughs> there isn't really any available they're pretty close and i think it kind of stems from the last play if we played in differently i think we could be playing in two and be even interesting that he like lost a little bit with uh playing to the four instead of the five 
Okay, but he cleans everything up. Nice distribution, just playing into the three. I guess he's going to pause to think about pre-clearing. Uh, no shot levers, so a reasonable time to do it, but it's going to give up a few gammons at not enough wins for it, I can see by the calculations there. Um, with a, like, one-point board, I'm just not worried about leaving the shot is why I would think differently about this. Um, small inaccuracy yeah. there. Yeah, small Stays inaccuracy. even further, but tends to take more checkers off when we stay with that 4-3-2 yeah. distribution. I, I really like the... There. I just want to mention that I really love the sound of the Tempest clock mm. when they press the clock. Yeah. It's a nice and tactile device. Yeah. I don't think he needs to play aggressively bear off here. He's going to win a gamut if he can come home safe, and this is yeah. pure perfect clearing roll, so I like this decision too. 5-1, okay, a little bit out on the outside. If Sander can stay in the air, he might get a shot after all. Mochi actually leading the PR race here with a 6.2 to a 9.9. .9. Interesting. This and is looking good for Mochi. I mean, he needs yeah. to make a comeback. You know, he needs a 2-0 win in this match so he can get right, back to 7-3. Right. And if it's if he gets to 7-3, then all of a sudden he's... I mean, he's still trailing big, but... Yeah. yeah. He, he's in the hunt. Yeah, that's how... I mean, comebacks and backgammon always happen like that. Just uh, like one game at a time, right? Yeah. They're like, you can be, man, I, I shared the graph from my WBIF finals where I was at some point down to like 1% match winning chances and I got all the way up to over 95 and then lost the match. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so it happens. I don't know. It, it, like those odds are still true, but they can change little bit by little bit, right? And by so the way, we just, out. did you notice that Sander didn't want to stay there? And, and gain an extra decision for saving backgammon. He ah, just yeah. left the... So, so I, and I think actually he knows now. I think he's aware. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe that's why he's laughing. It's still possible to save the gammon too. He, so he demonstratively decision. doesn't want that extra decision. He wants to beat Mochi yeah. without gaming the yeah. system. And he's doing it, which is really impressive. I think, uh, I mean, that's very meaningful. If he can achieve something like... Uh, Super Grandmaster level of play without gaming PR, right? That's a little yeah. bit different. Yes. Yeah. Book your room for the Backgammon World Championship and Monte Carlo Open. Limited rooms available and only 500 room nights, so hurry up and book now. Yeah, get your ticket for the Fairmont Hotel. Book your hotel room for the World Championship. It's probably going to be bigger this year. Um, I'm a little bit worried. Uh, uh, on behalf of Sander here, because I'm starting to get a little bit of deja vu from uh, from 2019. Mochi finds the split res or the slot response even at the leading score. Good stuff from him. Cool. Yeah, cool play. Which was correct, by the way, wasn't it? Right. It yeah. was the best play. Three six hits in the outfield. Three away, seven away is going to be very difficult to find a cube for Mochi. Oh, air ball. Yep. What about the, ah? He's up. He's up four zero. No way. Right. Five gonna hit, and then we can split with the ace. Why not? Right. No, no. Look it's at this. Seven. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. Okay. Two men on the bar, so you can sure. maximize uh, your flexibility here. Yeah. Healthy lead for Mochi in this game, but again, it's gonna be tough to get enough of one to send it. Once we get there in a position like this, it's likely to be too good and too many gammons. But we saw Sander find like time one of those perfectly in an earlier match. They can happen, you know. That's right. It's just hard to find it. Good play, Mochi. Really good play. Mm -hmm. In with two. Mochi hoping to make the five point on head here. Five four. Five four can cover and play no. down. That's about all it has. Okay, okay. Not the best. No, not what he was hoping for. Give some initiative back to uh, Sander. If he can make the twenty point, he's in great shape in this game, and he does. I guess I don't see a need to slot here, but we really don't want to strip our midpoint, I guess. Hmm. He's going to go for the big play. Okay, okay. That's a creative play. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's too not, far off. Not yeah. horrible, but it's, uh, it's he's kind of slotting with the wrong checker. That's the problem. Yes, yeah. Well, he's kind of glad in this sequence, I guess. Not that he yeah. would have been hit last time, but now he has a six to play. Yes. He's got some flexibility. Mochi's getting nice, simple decisions for the most part, too. Just advancing his holding game with a winning race. And what about this and one? 
This one is interesting. This catches up, so I don't think we're going to have time to sit back on the 24 anymore. Me neither. So I think he has to do something, something out there. Yeah. So what can we do? Okay, so the computer oh, wants to stay back with a goalkeeper and then make yeah. the deuce point and slot the three. That makes sense. But I yeah. think Sander might oh. even be tempted to coming make out and making the 16 point here. I mean, that's that's the other option, right? It looks very uh, pure, right? This is oh, something pure. This I one. like this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... In these mutual holding games, we need to have a board for the inevitable contact. So focusing on that has some merit for sure. Yeah. I think keeping the eight is still worth something here in front of that anchor, though. So yes, it's worth something. So. And more importantly, you, ah, yeah. it's a blunder. More importantly, yeah. uh, you don't want to get stuck with four checkers deep. You can't play a back game when you're only behind 10 pips. You don't have the mm -hmm. timing for it. So he yeah. should have focused more on mobility here and played mm -hmm. 24 to 20. Mochi's position continuing to progress pretty naturally, and he's got a healthy lead in the match and a healthy lead in the PR oh, now. This is what he needed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, it's looking good for Mochi. These that's dice exactly are, in addition to like overplaying a little bit, the follow-up with the rolls has been not good for Sander here. No. These are not pleasant decisions to have to make any step of the way. Close decision again there. Mm -hmm. Ace, I think we want to take away the timing of the outfield here, and then... You want to conquer the outfield for sure. Uh, yeah. And then the question is, do we hit loose on the deuce point, or do we just come out completely and conquer the outfield? And Mochi made the right decision. Right, with he the one-point board outfield. against a better board, all these things. I don't think we gain yeah. enough by making the deuce. So. No, and you're not scared of, of Sander angering up in deep, because he does, yeah. he can't play a deep back game with this sure. pip count. We're still, so I think, a far, long not, way from a cube, enough. but this is the kind of game where we can get there that's like unlikely to be a back game, and like not a lot of... Doesn't look to be a ton of gammon threat here. As long as there are six men back, Sen, uh, Mochi is not going to cube. He's going to try to go for an undouble yeah. gammon. Now here but, is, uh, yeah, we can safety up, but I feel like we need some, this is an understandable uh, mistake too. Yeah, yeah, it's too many fly shots in the outfield here. Too many but fly shots. We really shots. want some structure shot. to bring this home against the 23, and what better opportunity, you know, yes. I guess... We'd rather make the four first as part of it, too, and our opponent does have a lot better board. So. I'm surprised here that you're not supposed to make the 21 point. Really? The 23 is doing great work here. Why do we want to come off that? Yeah. Uh, just just because of the hip count, you know? it's We're not that far behind in the race. Wow, good play, Sander. I, I think yeah. I would have misplayed this one. But wow. Mochi, Mochi got the, had the wrong idea in the last position. He should be worried about fly shots, and he should be building outfield points to bring it home. He can so what's the best way here? Make amends here. Twelve, I guess. I think he makes the. Uh, okay, I, I was well, we thinking can about leave making more the fly shots now here too. So making the eleven is kind of tempting. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But the problem with making the eleven, I guess, is that we can't really clean up the position well. We're gonna leave a lot of fly shots, and we don't like that. So the computer just oh, no. tells us to just make the twelve point, and basically we can just make the eleven and clean up seventeen to six, and and leave the same just one single indirect. But it, it's eights um, and nines, you know, it's it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. I don't know if lot. it's tactics here. I think strat strategically we want to get rid of this point when we make it, it That That might also be a fact, yes. That might might play a role as well. And we control more of the board when we stay back on the 17 as well. But I, now that I see the computer play, just making the 12 point, I really like it because mm -hmm. the, these outfield points are... Yeah, he, he made that... I mean, I, I, would, I think I would have made this play as well. But uh, I can see why the computer just want to make the 12 point. Not have any outfield shots other than double this sixes. Seems quite natural. We're just going to find some mobility and make the better board. Yeah. Impossible to misplay for center. I mean, you, yeah, you could be tempted to make the 21 point again, but yeah. now it's better to make the five, of course. I think shifting to have this nine point is worth something. So I. I I don't think we're worried about overtiming Sander. Again, the reason that keeping the 23 and 20 is very nice yes. is that he can just run off of either of them eventually if he doesn't like the back game and yeah. play an anchor game from either. Um, so there's not really any timing gain to be had. Ooh, Mochi can make this point. That must be stronger than leaving it slotted. That must I, be stronger, yeah, because he's actually he's blitzing against the back game right now, <laughs> right. <laughs> which is Wait. usually not the best idea, but it can work. And uh, yeah. the gammon, look at the gammon rates, 33.8% after making right. the four point. So he's going to take the time to think about whether or not he needs to try to break Sanders' timing by being hit. But yeah. I don't think his prime is strong enough, and I think Sanders' board is too strong to go for that in this position. Yes. Sanders doesn't mind dancing here. Yeah. I think. At least he preserved timing. 
Yeah, I didn't think, I think there's a lot of wins and a lot of gammons in a position like this, and so we shouldn't be thinking about the cube, but he pauses yeah. briefly to consider he it. He briefly, but... Oh, the, the... and now we do have a timing play here. I would probably find the simple bringing in somehow, but but it's option to put the checker on the ace and hope the opponent recirculates us. Yeah, very interesting. yes, yeah. it is very interesting. I yeah. think that's the play I would find. But with two yeah. men on the bar, he, he can take this opportunity to clear the eight and the nine point. While yeah. Sandra has two two men on the bar, and right. if you manage to clear the eight and the nine point, then that five two back game goes way down in value for Sandra. Yeah. Look also at the distribution that we get against uh, an entry on the ace. We're yeah. perfectly poised uh, to knock him out there and make sure he doesn't improve his back game to like a one two five or something like this. I understand why Mochi is having a look at this play. It's mm -hmm. very likely that I would find this play as well. But now Almost that we see equal strategic ideas, yeah, yeah, totally reasonable. Yeah, fair enough. It was two very different ideas. You want to clear from the rear while your opponent is on the bar, or yeah. do you want to try to gain timing by slotting the ace? Hmm. Ah, clear the eight point, right? I don't think we can do that now that we've slotted the ace. We need to rely on our. If we open up sixes out too, now we can get hit and his four point board can do work. So because he yes, played you're right. the last play, he needs to play nine to six here. Yes, you're right. You're exactly right. Yeah. It's too big to clear the eight point. Now we have to stay with our prime a little bit. One three, oh, that's great. Shot for Sander, yeah. Gets yeah. to come up to the edge for mobility as well, twenty three to twenty. Uh that's huge. Yeah, that is yeah. very huge to get that spare checker on the twenty point. And it's Mochi launch could ready. Crack on this roll, right? Like it, it <laughs> he must could. be something bad. Uh, three, one, 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 four. Oh, one, three is interesting. One, yeah, yeah, one, four is a cracker. Yep. Good shot from Sander as well. Yeah, perfect mobility roll. Yeah. Three, four gets the hop out. Okay, great shot also, for Mochi. Also good. Mochi avoids the yep. nightmare oh. scenario. Interesting. And Sander gets his timing in the outfield. Oh, I would have instantly oh, made that. Why do we yeah. want to spread out? That's really interesting. It's for, for contact purposes and timing. It, mm. But we want to keep those two checkers out there for timing. And for we timing, preserve, but, but if you keep yeah. them out there, if you make the 14 point, then you don't have much contact. You, you rarely end up hitting that guy. A little I bit think less. that's a little bit less, yeah. So I think that's yeah. the trade off. This is like a forward idea playing this way, then. That's very strange. Yeah. This is hard to pass yeah. up on this play. I'll be I, I would make if he this decides he wants to be hit instead. Yeah, because it's he's, so he's it looking looks, at it. It looks fairly clear that we've got reasonable timing if we just let Mochi's checker by, play from those like midpoint checkers, yes. and just wait for the prime to deteriorate. Right? It looks very strong. I think it's impressive that Sanders having a look at this one. Yeah, I don't even know this idea really. Thinking about maximizing contact, but it's not that bad to get hit. Because you, you did liberate one of the two checkers, mm -hmm. so you will have some timing there. And then the other one can go back and recirculate. It seems like it certainly could be bad to get hit to me. If we enter on the ace and have any trouble advancing, then we're yeah. very sad and we've lost a lot of timing, you know? That's true. It, yeah. it's, it's a little bit risky. Uh, if you anchor up, then you at least you know you have that timing. If you right. get hit, you might have worse timing, you might have better timing. <laughs> and you might also lose a, more gammons. Yeah. The gammon rate just went up from 19 to 23% here with this hit. Right. Oh, beautiful return. Oh, so you see, he gained. Five, three, five, three, two, three. He gained some timing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it worked out well in Sanders' sure favor. Did. Threes looks like it can just clear. And Mochi's in the... Still one roll, usually against the 5-2. So the usual back game rule is that we want three points in front to clear. Yeah. But against the 5-2 back game, we actually want to clear those points and lose our market first, typically. So oh, even really? for money, I don't think he tends to have a cube here, though the impurity of Sanders' board could push that. Uh, um, at the I, score, for sure not. At yeah, yeah, the score, for sure not. No yeah. way. Not even when he has two points to clear. But I would think for money, I, I would double this one for money uh, next roll with three points to clear against the 2-5. Mm. Yeah, and I another think... another fun thing to know about the 5-2 back game is that the trouble point to clear is actually not the 8 point, it's the 7 point. Mm -hmm. Because the 7 point forces you to play 6s from 7 yeah. to 1. When you clear the 7 point, you killed your own 6s. So typically given the choice, you should clear the 7 point before the 8 point against the 2-5 back game. Yeah. That was a good play by Mochi, wasn't it? Oh, I didn't see what the best was there. I'm curious about the cube action for money. 
Ah, okay. Can you check it? Yeah, it's a pass because of uh, the impurity of the structure, I think. Yeah, 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 you got a double. Looking good for Mochi here. Uh, I mean, he. <laughs> it, this is one of those positions that uh, it might be like too good to double take. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because Sandra still has decent winning chances, but Mochi is winning more gammon, so Mochi would be worse off if he doubled, regardless of what Sandra did. He'd yeah, be yeah. worse off if he took, he'd be worse off if he passed. <laughs> right, so right. Mochi want to just go ahead and win an undoubled gammon here. Is that the right deuce? I'm not so sure that's the right deuce. Yeah, that's mm. the wrong deuce. It's nice to be backloaded here and take off the the, the, lo the front loaded checkers because it speeds up your bear off. Interesting, okay. A and you yeah, avoid the Oakley 6-5 as well. Mm, yeah, that's probably a big swing. So does he need to play 6-3 to dodge that now? And get I ready to clear? Yeah, I think you bear off. You go. Yeah, you go for the gammon here. Okay. You need to go for the gammon. The gammon rate is around 50%, so there's a mm -hmm. big swing between the two plays, gammon safe or gammon aggressive. Okay, Sander breaks a little bit of contact. We didn't get to see if it was the right play. Oh, here but... it is. There's the 6-5. Still a little bit tough for Sander to win this one. He's got to return around the board and go fishing after he hits the first checker to really lock it up. Sander takes a but deep breath and he yeah. misses. Crucial Runs moment in the game. Hands. There could be some backgammons for the match in this game too. <laughs> yeah. Here, you know? I wonder. It's like probably one or two percent here backgammon. Yeah, because he's supposed to stay back to try to save the gammon or win. You know. Yeah. Now, now he's probably going to run one of them. Mm -hmm. Seems which, pretty reasonable. Which makes the backgammon almost impossible. Probably impossible, actually. Yeah. Or somewhat close to it. Yeah, he just runs all the way. I think it starts with an ace. Double three. Wow. I think. Okay, Fourth one. shot. Do we reduce? I think having a checker off is worth quite a bit here. Yeah. Going from 10 to 11 checkers off is, is valuable. No, this is the wrong play. Have, getting the 11th checkers off is like 7 yeah. extra percent in winning chances, 7 or 8%. So yeah. leaving one extra shot out of 36, that's only 2.8%. Right. So probability. Yeah. So it's got to be much better to take off the eleventh checker. It's worth much more. I'm sure Mochi will will find. A, I mean, even I can calculate this easily. So I'm sure Mochi can do it as well. Mm -hmm. When he takes one off, is there any role that's going to win a backgammon? A one-three? Oh, yeah, you can get some backgammons that way, too. There's actually a yeah. pretty significant difference there. There's a <laughs> yeah, chance from, versus no chance. Yes, good play, Mochi. Good play. Yeah, yeah there's a chance versus no chance. That's right. <laughs> it's like one in a hundred versus one in a thousand. Yeah, runs okay. off the backgammon. It, it should be a locked up gammon, but not necessarily, right? Good there news. we go. That'll do it. Gammon and Mochi six. on the Crawfords. Yeah. This is. Uh, Mochi hasn't played his best, but. He, it's looking good for Mochi. It's looking good for yeah. Mochi. Visit the Galaxy Shop for luxury backgammon boards and accessories. Designed by players for players. Yeah. Yeah. Get it? Oh, yeah, I agree. It's been a bit of a messy match for both of them. I mean, difficult decisions, but Mochi with a pretty clear PR lead, too. So if he can close yeah. out the match in this game, he's well on that comeback trail for sure. It'd be two much needed points to get him back in this, this finals. Yes, it would be great for the excitement. For yeah. us and the viewers, if Mochi could take two I'm points here. Rooting for more backgammon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Five, three in a point of response, okay. And with an Ottawa uh, Crawford score, wow. gammons aren't going to count for anything for a Sander, really, mostly. A uh, tricky one, but why not the same as the opening, especially after our opponent makes a deep point? I think uh, there is an, a strong case for playing uh, 13 to 7 here, going for a pure priming structure. Sure, but sure. it's probably just the better play, the default play. Come up yeah. to the 21 and come down from the midpoint. The anchor looks great. This is already a nice priming point. Uh, um, yeah, because of Sander, the Sander made the three point, which is slightly right. impure. So there's yeah. an added uh, value to, to Mochi's pure priming game plan. 
But he knows they're close, and he's going to spend yeah. the time to try to figure it out. That's very interesting to me. Cool. He, he made the pure play. Small error, but nothing big. Sure, sure. Still a deep understanding of the game to even like stop and think about that, really. Yeah. 2-1, that's a hit. Good shot from Mochi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Five is going to make some nice distribution improvement for Sander. Yeah, Still under the pressure here. Reverse move order. Oh, this is tricky. It's really tempting to make the nine point here, but I'm. Can we oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you can improve your prime structure, when you can improve your prime structure, that's worth leaving a shot. But we give up the outfield. We risk being hit on the midpoint, and we disconnect from the twenty-four point checkers. So it's not clear how long we can keep this five prime. Well, um, we, we saw the interaction with the twenty-two point blot is very strong. Down that's the thing. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We yeah. saw the we saw how clear of a play it was. It's a blunder to play anything else. So it really yeah. shows you the the value of a pure prime. Look Even how much it changes this play too. Sanders should just step up to the edge and play down and try to counter prime uh, instead of making the anchor now. Yes, that's fascinating to me. Yes, that is fascinating. It's because Mochi's formation is an outside prime. He has more points in the outfield than in on the in inner board, which makes his prime and uh, and blitz value both priming and blitzing value less strong compared to an inside prime mm -hmm. and that's that, that's what gives sander the the freedom here to actually just split all the way up to the edge yeah, yeah. you want to split against the prime formation that's a difficult play to find though i think it's very prov provocative when we're also outboarded here yes it is but it's it interesting that he plays like, the deuce yeah. first yeah right i guess he's thinking about playing down with it or what it's slotting, impressive if, if Sander a lot of things, yeah. if Sander finds the splitting play here. That's very impressive. It's fun that he played the deuce first, so he's kind of eliminating the chance of making the twenty-two point. So he, I guess he's considering coming down with two checkers or splitting up to the edge of the prime to see some daylight and fight for that edge of the prime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Both players look like a little less fresh to me, too. I don't know. Sander maybe more so. Yeah. OK, but he makes this down, play. Okay. Goes for the two offense. Yeah, it's, an, it's an error. Thought and DMP, yeah, yeah. Error, but not a blunder. And now what about what Mochi is... here? Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Hit and split, maybe? I guess so. I guess so. This play, oh no, uh, oh, all super close. Split okay. and down, no hitting play. Oh yeah, they're yeah. all super close. It's already primed, I and mean, we're like already have the game plan we want. But it feels so natural to unstack, even though it's unpure, impure. Yes. Um, yeah. And and Sander doesn't really have any gain from uh, winning a gammon, so Mochi, yeah. he doesn't really need to split to make an advanced anchor to avoid mm -hmm. losing a gammon. The main Doesn't thing matter you need to because avoid here is switching to an attacking game plan by switching from the seven to the three, which I think you might be thinking about here. Ah, uh, that okay. So yeah, making a gap in your prime and giving your yeah. opponent a way out. That's yeah. Okay. That's at normal scores, this is clearly right for all the gammons it wins. Yeah, so that's the gammon play. It's hard to evaluate what the difference with the wins is going to be. It's right? not the double match point style yeah. to 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 eliminate or to destroy your pure prime. It's it's right. more of a gammon go style yeah. style of play. Pretty clear play for good, Sander, and now he play. controls the outfield, and, yeah. and lots of good chances to survive a game now for Sander, but I think Mochi's still doing better. Wow, Five what a roll for Mochi. <laughs> I was just about to say that Mochi's probably sad that he broke his prime, but that, that roll, wow. Wow. I think he's got to do that hit out there. Yeah, the, yeah. The 9-4 to four is the clear part. Then he yes. wants to think about, do I want to give chances of anchoring, or should I fight for that right away? Just hit an but outfield I mean, point. This is he outfield was... presence too, right? Like That can be very important, can help us cover the... Yeah. The seven points. Um, but Good shot. Another nice return from Sander. Yep. Good shot from Sander. Now he's in it till the end, at least. <laughs> yeah. Four and six. I good think shot. Up. Yeah. yeah. Good shot from Mochi. Mm -hmm. Reestablishes the mid. Five three. Yeah, I think he wants to stay on the twenty three, right? I'm not sure though. Me neither, this because is this is this, is this is like double match point strategy, right? You. you Sander yeah. doesn't care whether he loses a gammon or not, so he might be tempted to step up from 23 to 18. Right. 
I guess it just reduces shots by so much to make the 13 and play a checker pass somehow. Yeah. Um, a little too strong. Yeah. It's it's not the right idea to come out to the 18 point. So good. Uh -huh. This is okay. good play, Sander. Very good play. Yeah. <laughs> Double aces. aces. Wow. Yeah. One. I guess it's better because I guess it's better to switch because Sander could enter with an ace and then Mochi yeah. really wants that uh, seven point made. Well, finds every nice. every ace correctly in order. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sander keeps fighting. Yeah. A little bit of life here. Yeah, it's not over by any means. Five, six links up again. So Make Sanders going for a counter prime here. Mm -hmm. Just a few rolls away. Double That's a big three. Start. How do we play this? We could play it slightly safe by making the seven, or we could play it bold by somehow making the five. It feels like we can already cause our problem, our our opponent, some mobility issues by making the seven. So I'm tempted to do that. Maybe even slot with it at DMP. Yeah. Um, but turning into a full attack. Oh, this one uh, it seems seems like a little too much. Yeah. 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 yeah, Sander go back. But there's wow, so many so combinations. Making the 10 and the 5 together is very good too, but I don't yes. want to unblock those 6s for a roll. So I, I feel better even about slotting here, but actually XG by a small margin prefers 9 to 6 to save play with it. Okay. Yeah, this is also a reasonable play. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the making the 7 and slotting the 5, that's interesting. No, that's that's that can't be right. You need purity here, otherwise you're getting destroyed. And look at all the plots in the outfield. Yeah, that's just that's just wrong. <laughs> There's like ten different combinations for Sander here. Tough mm -hmm, play. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to a student about this today. That like doubles are for a lot of people the hardest roles to play, right? But it's not because there's anything special about them, really. It's just like it's like you get two roles at once, and so you get like exponentially more game plan decisions you tend to have like yeah. a big swing in the race that happens everything changes and it's still all the same fundamental backgammon strategy yeah it's just that it stretches the game so quickly and you have to figure all the possibilities out right then instead of just getting like a small step in the right direction right yes yeah. which means that it's it's great in terms of winning the game but right. it, in, in in terms of winning the pr point <laughs> it makes mm -hmm. it more difficult <laughs> yeah yeah very much so and I think with everything where we want it, we just have to go for mobility as Mochi. I love this. Point. Yes, and it's a distraction uh -huh. as well, distraction yes. slot. Because yeah. Sander wants to make the seven point and the four point. Every other checker is placed where we want it. So let's just try to move and, and link up the back checkers and, and bring the That's game home. That's not a good roll for Sander. Well, I think it can hit at least, you know? I think that's the best we can do is buy a tempo here, right? Yeah, he, he, he plays the five first, which is the correct way to do it, because now you can consider playing six to three as well. Yeah. But I think he yeah, comes to the conclusion that he needs to blitz to escape here. That's the maneuver, the strategy, blitz to escape. Running out of chances, and Mochi can just clean up the back blot, I think, uh, 17 to 14. Yeah. Oh, that, eight, out to the 18. I'm not sure what the merit of this play that, is. It's that's a distraction. It's, it's a so distraction close. play. I mean, that's my play. I'm coming out to the 18 here for distraction. Out to the other side mm -hmm. of the avalanche. So we never get pointed on the four. Okay. Exactly. You're not. I mean, you're not really worried about getting hit in the 17 and 18 point. Very interesting, yeah. But it's a close play. It also makes sense to clean up the blot from the 17 yeah. point. We have so much timing we get out of that. It's still hard to imagine exactly how we're going to lose after we get pointed on ahead on the four. Nice find by Mochi. Yeah. It looks like. He's going to take a look at it first. if we can get away with this. 5-6 doesn't hit anything. Okay, that's a huge step for, for Mochi closing this game out. Three one. Hmm. A little bit awkward. Uh-huh. Three two. Mo uh Sander can't make a point or get to safety. Not what he's looking for. I guess he can slot two points. What else do we have? I don't see any other play. 
Yeah. Otherwise, we're just playing with the checker in the outfield, I guess. Ah, yeah, you can play to the here. 15. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that's a reasonable play as well. But Sander slots. The PRs are coming down a bit. So I think Mochi should buy time to get home here, even though it might yeah. time him up and create some more. Like This is always a dilemma when you're playing DMP. Do you actually want another checker involved or not? Oh, you uh, definitely want to hit to send a third man behind the five prime. I don't think you actually want the third man back. I think everything else risks being like offensive plays. Okay. If that makes sense. If you could just play safe around, like double sixes, I don't know what I would do with. Mm. I'm not sure I would hit with those. I think we should just hit. Yeah. What if Sander rolls a double six, for instance? You know, it's <laughs> the third man behind the five prime just makes sure that nothing can happen. Yeah. I've got a lot of positions like that in uh, I mean, my book, actually. Yeah. It, if you go from three to four men, then it's a different story. Then there are occasions where you don't need the fourth guy. Two to three is like that with wins, too, for sure. Okay. Or it can be. I mean, one to two even can be. Give the opponent the chance to anchor when they didn't have that before. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Depending on the race. Yeah. Five three is just going to bring two checkers in, I think. Does he want to save a six for some reason? I don't see uh, why. Yeah, it's good Stop to kill out. the sixes on your own side of the board for Sander. Hmm. Ooh, four one can make a step towards home and leave only uh, yeah. six five. But I mean, just playing in seems fine too. Both but plays if, seems fine. Yeah. I guess actually, if Sander comes out with a six and parks on the seventeen, then we're a little bit sad that we didn't advance the fourteen point in case we don't roll a six, right? Uh -huh. And here's exactly that scenario. I think he's going to stop right there. But at least we have we have many rolls here to hit him back. It's in good hitting range, six pips away. Yeah. But that's the, when we don't, then it's, I mean, Sanders not so sad to be hit here for timing, right? Um, and he gets some contact with that 14 and double yeah. match point. Like here, it's, good, good yeah. Good roll from Mochi. Helps bring it home, yeah, yeah. Both players are down to two minutes on the time bank here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Both of them seem to be counting on this being the last game of the match. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is big for Mochi, right? Because he, he's looking to take two points here in this match. Yeah. And take the first step in terms of his comeback. All right, fanning is actually pretty good for Sander, I think. I think he would like to wait a roll or two. Yeah. Make sure he doesn't crash his board while Mochi exactly. comes Exactly. He doesn't mind losing a gammon at all. Yeah. All that matters is that he doesn't crunch his home board. Nice shot for Mochi, closer to home. Doesn't make, mind making the nine point. Shouldn't be difficult to clear. Only leave indirects. Six, it's five, okay. Playable. Can't afford another one of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nightmare coming up. Okay, okay Sander's ready for it, too. Must be a 6-5, right? No? Okay. <laughs> Not quite. <Safe>. That's perfect. 6-1. <laughs> Beautiful yeah. distribution for Mochi here. Oh, there's the oh, crunch. Yeah, yeah. Not good. Sandra really needed a 6 or a 5 there. Wow. Oh, okay, this is going to decide quite a bit too. I think we're going to have a 7-3 yeah. score here. Looking like it. Clown is way back in, I think. Yep. That's good for more backgammon. It is. It is. Oh, he gets a decision with his double twos, even though there's like nothing. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five, yeah, three. Small decision here. I think the the crunched home board allows Mochi to take two checkers off, but this is also fine. Yeah, yeah. Both plays were fine. I would have to take a little time to figure out how many shots each iteration leads to. Three, two must have to leave. Play safe now. 5-4 going to come around and get into the last couple chances for Sander here. Needs a 2-up. 5-1 is going to clear safely. And going to need anything other than an ace pretty much next roll. The 6 is not good. Now he has 3 dead checkers there. Going to be tough to close Mochi out even if he does get the shot. Two big numbers will leave an ace. That's not Okay, it. that's nice. I, I guess you're picking pass just to try to get him off that deuce point. Yeah, I hope he enters high. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that it's this close. What's uh, it's the... just because you can't lose either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, percentage-wise, it's it's not that close. But when you're thinking about, there's a point four or a point six percent winning chance for Sander after each either play, which right. means that it's actually thirty-three percent worse to not hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, relatively speaking, it's a terrible play. <laughs> but why not just hit? Yeah, okay, he does hit. So. There it Three is. Three them yeah. high. That's going to decide it. All right. Good. Okay. I mean, we're happy because uh, we get to see more backgammon, <laughs> right, Nick? <laughs> we shouldn't be Mochi partial. Mochi looks happy. His first match win. He can't believe it. I'm sure of it, right? I can win at backgammon sometimes, too. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I'm getting a little bit of deja vu to 2019 yeah. here. Xander coming out, playing like amazingly grandmasters super high level world class on day one and then messing it up on day two oh, and there we are with the pr result confirmed yes sander's still ahead in the pr though 2.5 yeah. versus 3.0 expected that was a crucial win for mochi hanek getting oh, back yeah. to three points seven three for sander so mochi yeah. is kind of in the hunt again Absolutely. I don't know who, uh, if I can possibly root for one or the other, but I am rooting for it to be a close match and for him to get his chance to first match win of the entire tournament. <laughs> right, right? So that's pretty nice to get a little bit of dice help in there, you know? Yes, yep. for sure. Um, Second PR point two, which makes that race feel reasonably close, right? It's actually three to two on PR, despite the big score discrepancy. So yeah, looking okay. Yeah, and, and creeping in on Sam, Sander on the average PR as well. Sander mm -hmm. didn't have a good match today in the in this match. No, it was the worst either. the worst match we've seen from and Mochi, But but we've Sander played perfectly, yeah. perfectly strong backgammon in the first four matches on day one. Mm -hmm. and now he's coming into day two, the first match, and we so, see him play the worst match he's played yeah. uh, so far. He made I think three or four blunders and. Yeah. yeah, so I, I can't help getting a little bit of flashback to, to 2019. Mm, yeah, you're already worried for him. I, maybe <laughs> it could be that. It could just be normal backgammon. I mean, they both kind of seem to struggle to understand a couple of positions in that game, right? And had similar, similarly higher than average PRs, right? So both yeah. of them showing a little bit of humanness, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I ran the odds calculator already. Sander down to like 79% to win outright. And I think Mochi's already jumped up to 9% just with that match from below four before it. And 12% of the time they'll tie and it'll go to PR still. Yeah. Um, so that's a huge swing for Mochi. From, yeah, Mochi is up to 15% yeah. Final yeah, yeah. winning equity right. or whatever you exactly, want to call it. Exactly, exactly. So there's, there's, there's some light, right? <laughs> it's Definitely. a step in the right direction, but yes. still Sanders to lose for now. So we'll see exactly. how the dice are tomorrow. Yep, yep. But we're happy because we get more excitement now, right? Probably more yes. backgammon. So Absolutely. we're kind of cheering a little bit for Mochi here at this point. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Even though we're off, obviously impartial, right? We, we're not right. supposed to cheer on either side, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it was rough. 7-1, that's a big, that was a yeah. rough one. Yeah. <laughs> seven seven by the end of the day what do you think not likely but it could happen. not it could likely happen. but let's see um yep. okay good so i want to thank our sponsors here backgammon galaxy and fm gammon i hope to see you all in istanbul in april for the istavda annual festival backgammon tournament and the ubc which is now open for masters not only grandmasters uh shout out to the backgammon galaxy app Download it on your phone if you haven't already done so. We're almost up to 20,000 users now. So the app is growing and it's improving every single week. We're working full time. We have a devel software development team working full time on adding new features and improving the app. Then we have the masterclass book coming right out shortly. Uh, it's the manuscript is done. Everything is done. We're just getting it through the printing press right now as we speak. So it should be out in January and we can't wait to release this book. Uh, stay tuned for the Michi uh, Gr Grandmaster analysis videos as well, because uh, that's been fun so far, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And where is yours, Nick? Yeah, yeah. I think um, stop by my YouTube channel and subscribe to that if you like the kind of content you find there. I've been doing play and explain videos where I go through a whole match and share my decision-making progress while I'm playing um position analysis interviews with members of the community so i think a lot of cool stuff there that i hope you all will be interested in and we keep coming up with score plays 
in the matches. And I've got a book out now called Adjusting to Match Play that I think can really simplify that for you and, and help you develop your intuitive feel for how all these dynamics work when we need to really think about changing our checker plays and when we can just play normal backgammon. So check that out. That's available on Amazon too. Thank you. Good stuff. And like and subscribe and see you all tomorrow, guys. Yeah. Take Bye, care. Everybody. Bye. Hello, guys. Are you ready to roll the dice? Now, we have the UBC Grandmaster Analysis by Michihito Kageyama. I picked up one position from today's match. Black rolled 3-2 and score is 0-0-7. Black is holding 2-Q. Remember, Black's one checker is on the board. How do you play this 3-2? So obviously, 3 is a forced play. Black just uh, comes in from the board. Then, we have only two good options, 7 to 5 or 13 11. Which do you prefer? So over the board, Sandra Lilov chose 7 to 5. It seems a natural play because if we choose 13 11, then we leave two blocks in the outfield. Generally, just one blot is better than two blots. However, this play has two downsides. Downside number one, now white has a good one. So on her side of the board, white doesn't have a good one. So this play gives uh, one extra good number to white. Downside number two, black wants to cover the five point nest, but Black's back checker is end attack. So black checker will be on the bar next. So black's chance to cover the five point is very slim. We cannot expect it. That's why 1311 is a superior choice. And the difference is not small. 1311 is better by 180. So 7 to 5 is a double whopper. Remember, don't give the opponent extra good number. And if your back checker is under attack, slotting is not a good idea. Do you like it? Did you get it? Okay, see you tomorrow, guys. Are you ready to roll the dice? Now, I want to introduce you our third book, Back Checker Strategy, written by Roland Herrera and Michihito Kageyama. It describes everything about back checker. We categorize back checker formation into five groups. We should apply different concepts in each stage. We also put two unique ideas, F13 and glued back checker. I believe this book will boost your backgammon knowledge. My philosophy is the more you understand backgammon, the more you enjoy backgammon. Be happy with Beckerman.